People think of streams and rivers in terms of flow, and everybody gets the flow part because that's what we're looking at. But at the same time, there's a river of rock moving down this channel. Small streams and rivers have what I call the three rivers components to them. This course is about applied hydrology for the world of work. It's a course that takes stream dynamics and fisheries biology and combines them into a better understanding of what of what kind of in-stream flow requirements are necessary for fish habitat protection and fish habitat restoration on streams like this. If you go tell people that floods are good, you're gonna get a negative response. They don't wanna believe that floods have important functions. When you actually look at what floods do, they're essential for the health of the river system and they provide really important and good ecological functions that need to be preserved, need to be restored where possible, and need to be recognized. What you see here are good examples of what I call the river of wood because there are logs and, and pieces of wood that are entrained from the floodplain and the riparian area that move down the river system just like the rock and the flow do. So the water that collects in the watershed, the rock that moves down from the watershed, and the wood that's compiled from the river system and is moving down the watershed are combined into what I call the dynamic interaction of the essential three components. So it's the dynamic interaction of these three components that is going to be a principal element of the discussion in our class of why high flows are important to in-stream flow recommendations. People don't tend to take classes for entertainment. They take classes because they want to develop a knowledge that's important and valuable. A person that's had this class can sit down and say, look, I know that high flows are important, and I would suggest that we look at flushing flows, channel maintenance flows, and channel forming flows as a place to really frame this discussion and put this issue in context and you come up with the actual cubic feet per second frequency and seasonality duration of those flows and then that's a framework that everybody can work off of these are the types of sediments that are carried by what are called channel maintenance flows and they are important because those channel maintenance flows provide the sediment for riparian functions that we care about in terms of fish habitat so there are times that in-stream flow recommendations are going to include channel maintenance flows to activate exactly this kind of transport and deposition of fine sediment for um, ecological purposes. The information that you are gonna take away from this class is gonna suggest that high flows and flooding are important and, and valuable and essential to ecological processes. And you're gonna be able to apply the science that says this flow is important for this reason and this is what the numbers take us.